We had uh, the Kiss Starmer, the Prime Minister, heading over yesterday to Italy to meet with Giorgio Maloney, the Italian Prime Minister, what they decried as well. Actually, one Labour MP called her a literal fascist yesterday. Um, basically, far too right wing, terrible ideas on stopping migrant boats. Suddenly, he's in power, and uh, it would appear that Keir Starmer wants to take some ideas. And uh, we're told by Maloney that he took great interest in her Albanian migrant deal, which basically offshores the processing of uh, those who are seeking asylum in Italy. Um, do you think there's any likelihood? Um, would you want Britain to copy what G uh, Giorgio Maloney has done in Italy? Well, one of the things that Giorgio Maloney does is push back migrants. Um, and if they see, uh, they're really actually fining uh, rescue ships if they try and rescue more than one person, uh, or one more than one boat, rather. Well, what, okay, yeah, we're going to say, you've got, you, just, so, you, just, you just choose the person on the left and you say them. What do you mean if yeah. they try and rescue more than one boat? If, if there's one boat in... In, in need, a maritime law requires people to go and help those people. If they pass in another boat, then they, of course, have to rescue them. The law is the same. Well, Italy would just flagrantly breach those laws, and they copy. I mean, it goes back way back to Australians when they had Operation Sapphire, it was called, where they were used that to push back people from Australia. No, and I think it was Dame Angela Eagle was on television earlier on today, I and mean, she made it quite clear that uh, we will oblige. Um, abide by our international treaty obligations under SOLAS and UNCLOS, which require us to rescue people at sea, and we've got to rescue anyone. Now, but this is the thing, that the French are quite happy for boats to get across into our international international waters, and then the responsibility for those individuals passes to, this, mm. to the UK, and that can't be right. Well, that's the game. We, well, we would argue, why don't they just you know, get them straight, well, stop them getting into the boats in the first place. Uh, we've got drone technology. I mean, we saw Keir Starmer looking at some of that drone technology being used in Italy. Why you can't see Italy, it's the moment people appear in those boats, send people down, stop the boats almost immediately while they're still in French waters. That would be a simple thing to do, would it not? You hit the nail on the head. Um, look, before, when did this all start, this boat crisis, when did it start? If you think about it, it started straight after Brexit. Because the reason being is no. that is the smugglers realised that when people came across the UK, there was no longer a treaty to send them back. They weren't being sent so, back on, in any significant numbers for a number of years before then. You know that as well, well as I, I do. I disagree with you at the time. You the can disagree numbers, with me, but the facts don't lie. There were barely any people well. sent back before Brexit. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, but I don't know where you're getting your statistics from, but it's 70,000 people were used were using the Dublin Convention to send them back. But that's only if they ha they'd already claimed asylum in France. What I'm saying is that the French should stop them getting on in the first place. Well, we, 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 we all agree with that. What do you think about the outsourcing? We know that Germany apparently are going to be using our uh, accommodation we plan to use in Rwanda for, for migrants that they were going to take out. But also uh, we've got the situation where um, Italy's got to deal with the Albanians basically to outsource uh, the, the processing, although not the same as the Rwanda deal because people would be allowed to then come to Italy once they'd been judged to be genuine asylum seekers. Um, do you think that Britain should follow that? Do you think we will? No, I don't think we will, and I don't think we should. Why not? We, because we are signed up as a member of the Refugee Convention to consider... Well, so is Italy. And, yes, but Italy's... I'm sorry, but Italy's quite happy to breach international laws on the safety of people being but stranded But people aren't going to be unsafe in Albania. Well, one of the, if you if you remember the High Court judgment in the Rwanda case, the Supreme or the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court, one of the things that they objected to, which they ruled on, was that Rwanda didn't have a proper system for considering and deciding asylum cases. Now, I suspect Albania is no better. I, I rather assume it would be Italian official society in Albania, but well, we shall see. Oh, time is against us. Thank you so much. I'm sure we'll talk about this many more times. We'll see if whatever Keir Starmer and his border force, uh, border control czar come up with. Uh, thank you very much, Ivan Sampson, immigration lawyer. Um, I mean, Tom Slater, you've been joining me throughout the show. Uh, the, the, odds, the odds of Keir Starmer getting to grips with this, he passed the 10,000 mm -hmm. mark today of the number of people who've arrived since he became Prime Minister. Well, I, I think what we're going to see is that Keir Starmer's claim that you're going to get rid of Rwanda, hope for the best, appoint some sort of border czar and get Yvette Cooper to stand on the White Cliffs of Dover with some epaulets on or something. It's not going to win in of itself. I think Yvette Cooper standing on the White Cliffs of Dover would put some people off. It's a deterrent of sorts, it but would. it won't. Not, not